this is Joe Riggio with Socially Joe. Welcome to episode 44. I am here on episode 44 with my guest, Shell, who is a relationship coach who I met through a lovely networking group because I network way too much. She is so in all inspiring. She actually gave me a homework assignment, which I loved, but I'm giving too much information away. Let me introduce Shell. Shell, tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh, well, first, Joe, thank you so much for having me on. It's exciting to be here. And uh, yeah, where do you start? So I'm a relationship coach, like you said. I specialize in divorce, helping people that are going through the breakup or breakdown of relationships. And that's primarily romantic, but it can be any type of relationship. So I help people to build up mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. So just really passionate about helping people that are struggling in a relationship that want to have that really healthy, sustainable, loving relationship with passion and joy and fun. And if they're not having that in their marriage, either help them to do that or help them to get through the divorce or break up in a way that's healthier or help them rebuild afterwards. So that's really my passion is, is really, you know, training people and building them up so that they really enjoy their lives. That's wonderful. And like I said, I had the opportunity to talk with you and it's clear that you have a real passion for helping people and ending their people's struggles with relationships. But I, I just love it so much. But let's get into the questions now. You refer yourself to a divorce wellness coach and relationship strategist. Can you tell the audience what you mean by that? And please elaborate as much as you want on that. Okay, well, thanks. Uh, yeah, so, you know, a lot of times I've found, you know, we met through networking, and I've found a lot of times when I tell people I'm a divorce coach, because I'm trained as a divorce coach, and really, like I said, passionate about helping people get through that process or building up afterwards. And I find that people are it's kind of like the scarlet letter. It's just the word that nobody wants to discuss. And it brings up a lot of very unpleasant emotions for people, whether they're going through it, they know someone going through it, they've been through it. Uh, they're, they're fearful of having to face that time in their life. So when I say divorce, but I also mean long-term relationship breakup as well. They're all difficult and challenging. So with that, um, I really work <laughs> in the divorce realm, but also, like I said, in the breakup and for people who have lost their their spouse due to grief and loss of life. So that's all part of the process. So I realized that being specific to divorce wasn't really covering it. And because of my desire to help people build themselves back up, one in finding who they are again after a relationship, really tapping into their own joy and peace and what they were born to create and bring into this world and helping them find those passions is part of the process after coming out of a relationship. So what I realized is relationship strategist really describes it a lot better because a lot of times people will say, well, I went to a counselor, but they, they told me what, what was wrong, which I don't believe anybody has anything wrong with them. And I believe we all have room to improve, but not necessarily wrong with them. No one's broken. So with that, you know, people say, oh, I went to a counselor, I've done this, but you teach me what to do and how to move on and how to heal. And so a lot of times people refer to me as the, the how-to girl, but it's really because I'm passionate about helping them to be equipped where they can go and have fulfilling relationships across the board. We're talking with siblings and coworkers and friends and all different kinds of relationships with these tools and strategies that I help them with, as well as just different aspects of learning about themselves in a, in a much more loving, compassionate way, instead of the really tough judging aspect that we a lot of times tend to do uh, with ourselves and with others. That's awesome. So let me, this is a perplexing question that I've always had because I've seen it in so many ways, but I've heard January is called the divorce month. And do you actually see an influx of clients and calls at that time of the year? And do you think it's also because people want to put on that happy face and say, hey, I'm here for the holidays, we're gonna do it. And then January one comes up, oh, we're gonna end it out and now we're gonna start new. Yeah, well, it's, it's interesting you ask that, you know, considering, you know, we're talking this, this time of year. So, so to answer the question, yes, there's definitely an influx of calls starting uh, honestly, October, November, December, as people are, are anticipating and wondering how they're going to go into the new year. I think anytime we start looking at the new year, people start thinking, oh, it's a new fresh start. And what can I do that would be better? And 
So I think it's a combination of people not wanting to to go there during the holidays because they have so much on their plate, or maybe they have children and they want to keep it together for one more year with the kids. Uh, maybe it's just they want to make sure they file their taxes together, and but they know it's coming. And sometimes people, a little bit of the happy face you're talking about, sometimes people are thinking, well, maybe if we have this great Christmas, we'll reconnect, and this is our one last chance to really – you know, go all in and see what can happen. And then in January, they file. I think a lot of them know it's coming. And a lot of them, um, one of the partners, if they're not both on board and it's a mutual decision, that one partner may already be planning planning this. So, yes, January is definitely the divorce month. Not a, not a happy topic to discuss, but it is a true fact. More divorces are filed in that month. And as far as putting on the happy face, yeah, we all we all want to be happy, right? And it's such a time of year that people, you know, even if they're not super happy in their marriage, maybe they just aren't quite ready to leave and face it alone that time. And they think, oh, well, if I do it at the beginning of the year, then I'll have, you know, kind of the year to heal before I have to face the holidays, you know, by myself again. I, yeah, I can, like I said, I've seen it in so many day, different aspects, but I just wanted to get your opinion because you're the you're the coach. <laughs> so, being a divorce yeah. wellness coach, do you primarily just work with people with divorce or do you do more? Well, yeah, so it's divorce wellness. And so I think of that uh, in the way of healing divorce, making people well so they can prevent divorce. So maybe, you know, it's working with someone that they haven't thought of something. You know, to think that we are individually equipped with everything that we need is is really not realistic. You know, we're we're on a journey of, of development and to think, oh, you know, we got all these classes in school and now we're ready for the whole world. I mean, you take a new job and you're constantly being trained and learning new things. So it's the same thing in relationships. And so with that, you know, the divorce wellness aspect, I, you know, can sometimes present myself or a counselor or another coach or whoever it may be, you know, there's there's tools and new perspectives that we can that we can provide for people that kind of help you see your blind spots, you know, like a coach in a basketball game, you know, they, they see blind spots or you know, golf coach, they can see what you're doing. that just has you a little off on your swing or, you know, your game. So same thing with relationships. So divorce wellness, I think of it as helping prevent the divorce, helping them through the process of divorce in a way that they stay well. It is not unusual for the stress to cause some serious physical issues for people. So mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and physically, um, I cover all of those, you know, I'm a wellness coach as well and life coach, and I've been a trainer and all different things. So I incorporate that all in and helping them to truly be well in all aspects of their life. And if they're doing it through the divorce, then they're going to be healthier when the divorce is final. But again, it's, you know, of course we think of wellness as divorce wellness. You've gotten through the divorce and now how do we really be well afterwards? And feel whole and complete. And like I hear a lot of people say, I'm not crazy and I feel like myself again. Those are the key words I, I tend to hear people really want. I just want to feel like me. I just want to know who I am again. So that's that's what I call divorce wellness when I use that terminology. No, no, I love that. So what do you find to be the greatest challenges for people to have a healthy relationship? Mm, I think it's, a lot of really understanding, you know, like I said, we, we aren't fully equipped within ourselves to think that, you know, what classes did we take that taught us communication and understanding and compassion for other people? Well, where did we get that training in our schooling, our education? And depending on different households, you know, some homes, they don't talk about emotions or feelings. And, you know, there's different ways that people are brought up and raised. Some people have different aptitudes, but I think it's really the greatest challenge is understanding that we're all different, but it doesn't make anyone wrong. And understanding that we're all created so beautifully and really discovering our own values and how our values show up and how we honor those and how we respect someone else's values, even though they may be different. Like if I told you to, as I told you, I wouldn't tell you, I would ask you to pick up the towel and you'd be like, okay, well, and I have, you know, I like order and structure and taking care of things. And you're like, I don't see the big deal because it's not one of your values. 
so you're like, oh, I didn't mean to do that. Sure, I'll pick it up. But then two days later, you don't remember that it doesn't even occur to you because it's not a value of yours to pick up the towel and make things are in their place and you don't see it as not taking care of things. So it's, it's all about like really understanding we're coming from different places. So I see it, the greatest challenge as being closed-minded and thinking our way is the only way and that we are supposed to be with a partner who thinks exactly as we do, who operates as we do, who shares the same values, and that really becomes an obstacle for people because I really believe, and I've seen, you know, for years of years of coaching, that it really is about respecting each other and understanding their differences are what makes them beautiful and probably what drew you together. Uh, that opposites attract really can be seen much more as instead of this unnecessary torture of differences that are wrong but allowing the differences to fill the gaps rather than to create them because none of us are equipped a hundred percent with everything. So seeing that that partner's differences can balance and help. I don't mean whole because everyone comes in whole, but it just takes you to a new level and you have the ability to find that balance and communicate through it. So communication, understanding themselves. A lot of people don't know what their values are. A lot of people aren't really good at um, setting boundaries. That's another big component. I could go on and on. There's, there's several, so <laughs> there's several things I could say um, that become challenges, but I think it's accepting each person is different, understanding that we have different values, knowing what's important to us and our own values, and really being able to hold boundaries to protect those. So let me, let, me ask, mm -hmm. oh, let me ask you this real fast, Shell. Um, do you work with the men, the women, or both genders in like, because obviously everyone has different opinions, different whatever. So what was the clientele? Yeah, it's, it's definitely you know, more women because women just naturally tend to be more comfortable with personal growth and personal development. Not that there aren't a lot of men out there and I respect and just absolutely love that. Um, so they tend to be the ones who reach out more often. However, I'll tell you that the men that I work with, because I do work with both, and I absolutely love working with men, and I find it to be equally, if not more so, rewarding to work with men because they come in you know, from a place of not, not necessarily wanting to go to a counselor or not wanting to feel like something's wrong with them or wanting to be very pragmatic. You know, they, they want the tools, they want the tools for their toolkit. And because my approach is so oriented towards you're not broken, let's just give you some tools that you never learned. It, it just really works and really connects with them in a way that is so rewarding for me as a coach to see the incredible growth that, that men go through. The women do too. Absolutely. But for the men, just the light bulbs that go off and, the world that opens to them through working with a coach is just, and it could be like a professional coach, whatever. It just is so expanding for them that I believe the men just have a completely different life moving forward because they didn't know what they didn't know. And now they've been exposed to it. So I love working with both. I love it. So when is a good time to reach out to someone when helping with their relationships? Well, you know, it, I believe that we, and I see it time and time again, you know, the way I describe it is little resentments can build up over time very, very just naturally, you know, those differences that you have. And if we're not really consciously aware of those things that are annoying us or aware of what our values are, what's being stepped on and how it's being stepped on, and we're not able to fully communicate that, then 